In today's video, we're going to go over some TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Do you know what a cat's eye looks like? Like what? Like what do the pupils look like? Yeah, it's like the shape, that shape, right? Like yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that called? Like a snake. Like a like a slit or a vertical s slit eye. Yeah. Like, do you know what other <laughs> animals have eyes like that? Uh, Reptiles. Okay. Do you think lions and tigers have eyes like cats? No. They don't. No. In fact, cats are the only mammal. Mammal. Besides goats, but their eyes go like that. Yeah, like go, goats are squared. Eyes. Those are yeah. those are demonic. Those are, those are, are demonic. Yeah, yeah, they're freaking <laughs> those so much. But it's just interesting that cats, like they come from right the cat family. Yeah, feline. But they're the only cats in the cat world that have eyes like that. Lions yes. don't. Tigers don't. Panthers don't. All the other cats have circle pupils. Do they know why? There's it... one guy I was talking about maybe some weird genetic crossbreeding back in like the Egyptian days. Yeah. Cause you know, they like hold cats up at like, yeah, like a holy status. Yeah. But they also had, were like obsessed with snakes and stuff too. Yeah. But what was weird, my mom told us this the other day. She saw that to keep gators off your land, mm -hmm. you get an outdoor cat because gators are afraid of cats. The way cats are afraid of cucumbers, alligators are afraid of cats. Cats are afraid of cucumbers? You know, they're synonymous with, like, the occult. Don't you think that way? I actually never really stopped to think about not all other felines' eyes are like that. That is actually something to think about. And I have heard that alligators and crocodiles are afraid of cats. I've also heard that cats have been eaten by alligators and crocodiles. But I have heard a big majority of people, like in Louisiana, uh, down in Florida, they all say that, you know, hey, keep a couple of cats in your yard, it'll keep the gators away. And I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but it is interesting that people do actually believe that. It kind of makes me wonder if the alligators are afraid of the cats because of their eyes, because alligators also have those eyes. It just makes me wonder, like, why is it like that? If you guys have any ideas, leave a comment down below because maybe there's a point that I'm missing completely. The scientific reason why you should never hit the snooze button? Let me hit you with some neuroscience here. Two words, sleep inertia. That's right, sleep inertia. When you hit the snooze button, instead of getting your ass out of bed, you mistakenly create a condition in your brain called sleep inertia. Sleep inertia is a state that your brain gets trapped in for four hours after you hit the snooze button. Because here's what happens when you hit the snooze button. When you hit the snooze button, you're awake. And as the alarm turns off, your brain then drifts back into sleep. And here's the thing that researchers have figured out. When you drift back to sleep after you've woken up, your brain starts a sleep cycle. And sleep cycles take 75 to 90 minutes to complete. So when that alarm goes off again in nine minutes, and you're like, oh, my God, like, have you ever noticed you're like in deep sleep when you drift back to sleep? That's because you're nine minutes in to a 75 minute sleep cycle. That groggy, exhausted, heavy feeling that you have when you hit the snooze button several times and you can't quite get awake and you complain that you didn't get a good night's sleep. That's not a function of how well you slept. That's you and me being an idiot for hitting the snooze button and putting our brain in a state of sleep inertia. Because when you hit the snooze button, your brain is now freaking trapped in a sleep cycle. And it takes your brain, based on research, about four hours to get through that groggy-ass feeling. So the most productive period of the day, which is the first two hours after you wake up, it's when your brain has the highest speed of processing. It's when you're the most alert. You just flushed the best two hours of brain power down the frickin' toilet because you hit the snooze button. Why am I so passionate about this? 
because I wasted years of my life doing this. Hey, I actually have to agree with this. This isn't a conspiracy. This isn't a theory. This is just, I think, kind of facts. At least for me, I do not hit the snooze button. I have not hit the snooze button in, I, I don't even know how long, over 10 years, I'd say. And I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. My, I have one alarm. And it, it wakes me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And that gives me just enough time to do whatever I need to do in the morning to get ready for my day. Whether that's make a video, get ready for work, all the things. It, it really does help getting up in the morning. No snooze, no going back to bed. Take a shower, brush your teeth, do all that stuff. And you will feel amazing. Like, it, it does help a lot. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And it would be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow. When you die, you have choices. You don't know this, but you have choices. When you leave your physical body, it is very typical for you to see yourself standing next to your body with either your loved ones or EMTs or, or whatever the circumstances are. And you see yourself and then you'll hear a voice you'll see the tunnel of light and the voice will be calling you uh, or you will hear the voice telepathically um, telling you to come on come you know now as you stand there and you're looking at the tunnel of light you have a choice you can go up to this tunnel of light where you'll be with other loved loved ones that have crossed over usually all right and you'll be put into a system where you are essentially caught in a reincarnational cycle, a loop. Or you can turn around, put the tunnel of light behind you, and what you will see is the entire universe. If you choose to go to the universe instead of the tunnel of light, whatever dimension you came from when you came down here to Earth, Okay, we'll keep it all present, present time and place. Or whether it was sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth density, whatever it was. If you choose the universe and you say to yourself, I wish to go home, you will return to that dimension from which you came. So if it's five, six, seven, or eight, you will leave here and you will go back to that dimension where I am told you'll be reunited with your soul group. Because we're multidimensional, we're in many places at once. I've never shared this information before. I always find reincarnation videos extremely fascinating because I like the idea that reincarnation is a possibility, a choice even. That would be great if you have the choice of being reincarnated as another person or an animal. Who knows, maybe when you pass, the options there, like he said, you have the light, which will put you in a ever-evolving loop of reincarnation or you have the, the galaxy that gives you a, a totally different life. I, I think it's interesting. I just don't know. It's so tough. It, it's so hard to... It, it, it would be really nice to have those options, but it would also lead to a lot of other questions about our reality. Because if reincarnation is done in this way, if there is a place where you can go visit your loved ones and things like that, is that heavenly or divine? Or is it a part of a system that allows us to live that way for continuous recycling purposes? And I know that sounds really crazy, but I've seen some conspiracy videos of what was called soul harvesting. And basically, extraterrestrials put up these devices on the moon, the, the reincarnation antennas. They put them up on the moon, different planets. And basically, when we die, they do not allow us to cross over, but it keeps us ever reincarnated so that we keep feeding these entities' souls over and over and over again, almost endlessly. Uh, so it's very interesting to me. I, I'm curious... I wouldn't say I'm a believer in this. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a believer in reincarnation, but it is a very fascinating theory for sure. You're telling me that when you imagine something, you see it 
would you so this is the imagination spectrum at a at this highest level you can fully imagine a realistic apple when you close your eyes at the lowest level you don't see anything you can conjure the word apple but you don't actually see an apple in your head personally i'm like a four maybe four and a half like i can't get all the way to like a su super realistic apple but like i can see a red apple in my head now if you're all the way down here at the one where you don't see anything when you imagine something you just don't you can't conjure an image that's called aphantasia and it affects like between two and five percent of the world's population um it's not a bad thing it's just your brain works differently it's just a little fun fact about you that now you know i heard about some people that cannot imagine things like visually i personally like i can imagine a whole apple without even closing my eyes i can see a realistic apple right here i can pick that apple up and I can even take a bite out of it. And it's there. I can see the bite taken out of the apple and everything. It's, it's really crazy. I've always been able to visibly see things if I imagine it. I, I can see very clearly. And it's actually helped me draw in my past. Like I used to draw all the time because I could see the image that I want to draw. And I would just trace it basically. It's, uh, it's crazy to think that there's some people that just can't see anything. Let me know in the comments on what imagination spectrum you are under, whether it be five through one. I'm always interested in learning on people's minds and how they work. I was looking at this, uh, this video that was on YouTube that was showing the stages of artificial intelligence and that there's these multiple stages, artificial and general intelligence, sentient general intelligence, and then it goes to godlike artificial intelligence. But that is... Is that what God is and is that what we're doing? Are we making God if God made us in his own image? Are we making God? Is that what this whole thing is about? Well, you know, it's these are some of the questions that I have when I go back to looking at some of the characteristics of these like the Virgin Mary sightings and things like that like we now have technologies that can replicate what it seems like was happening during that event, you know, like in Garabandal at, in Spain in the 1960s and if that's the case, then it looks like Stephen's idea of the intelligence principle is correct when he says that there will be intelligent beings that will appear like deities to us. Mm. Which makes sense. Yeah. And I he also says, you know, and um, I don't know if you've gotten to the chapter on Simone in the book, but she's a quantum AI person and she's um, she talks about UFOs and and she hates the word artificial intelligence. Mm. She says it's completely, we don't like make a, a painting and then say, see this artificial, right. you know, we don't do yes. that. So why do we call it? Why? It's because she says we're afraid of it. You know, yeah. we're afraid that it's going to be sentient and we're afraid, you know, she said, but it's just another life form mm. that's that we happen to be doing, creating. Yes. And she says it's special in that way, but it's also going to free us in many, many ways. Ooh. She's a tech optimist. She's an accelerationist. Yeah. Well, I hope she's right. <laughs> hey, I am also kind of against the word artificial intelligence, not because I think it's a sentient being or anything like that. I just do not feel like that's the right fit for that kind of technology. I, I think that it's more of advanced computing, if anything, but even still, it's not even that. It's just a program that's taught to be as smart as it can. It just never goes out of the realm of thinking for itself. And to me, that just means that it's, it's just a program at the end of the day. It, it can be scary, and it can take jobs, and it can do incredible things that we have programmed it to do, but it's not a sentient being. Not until they start adding it to organic material and it becomes conscious. Like if they hook AI to a brain and that brain starts to function like it's an actual living, bleeding brain, then we will start to see a sentient form of life. But as of right now where it stands, it's just computer technology. It's nothing living. It is easily shut down through electronical impulses and it's just... It's not a living, sentient being. I don't think. Leave a comment down below on what you think, because I just don't see it. And as far as uh, are we creating God in our image, 
I do not think that either. Oh my days, they have just done what? Yeah, 2024 just gets even crazier. Like, what the actual hell is going on right now? This is mad. I don't even need to say about everything that's been going on this year, right? Is there, is there even anything I have to say? But it's terrifying, right? Now, you probably also know who Elon Musk is, right? And you know about all of his crazy inventions, including Neuralink, which they had plans for a couple of years ago. It's been in clinical trials, and today we had a huge breakthrough. So, in 2021, they tried this Neuralink chip out on monkeys, and the monkey was literally able to play a game on the computer by only using its mind. Since then, it's been in trials on more animals, in human trials, and now, today, the first man has had this actually put in. The first actual customer has just had this. Now, if you don't know, what actually is Neuralink? So, essentially, it is a chip which they are literally going to drill into your brain and put inside your head. It's quite small, but, I mean, it's not that small. It looks like that. Now, it's essentially a telepathy device which will enable you to do a lot of different things. Now, it does have positives. For instance, this guy was able to actually feel touch feel sensational touch through a robotic hand. You'll be able to essentially scroll on social media and control things with just your mind, which is a bit odd. Not being funny though, imagine he then decides to put ads on this. So you'll just be walking around going at throughout your day and you'll just get ads popping up in your eyes. Like, no thanks, mate. What's even scarier is a surgeon's doing this to put it in people? Nope, he's got a machine. This machine right here is going to do the surgery. No person. Great. But the scary things are, what if this gets hacked? It's a device at the end of the day. This could so easily, someone could just get into it. Like, imagine the consequences. See, so, yeah, I'm really not sure about this, but please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this whole thing. And as always, hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. So with this, this is now getting into that line of AI and becoming sentient in a way. This is not artificial intelligence. This is a computer chip that supposedly allows for brain Bluetooth and for other motor functions and things like that. I could see AI being implemented into these chips to allow that feeling of hyper-intelligence, and that'll be interesting, but it's not a form of sentient life as far as the AI goes. It is now a tool added on to a already living organic life, an already conscious organic life. So I don't believe that that transfers over to what I was saying earlier about AI becoming sentient or anything, because this is not within that realm. I do think that this is interesting, and I'm curious to see the progression of it, and I'd be curious to know on what you guys think as far as, is this something we should be doing in... Is this something we should be doing or should we not be doing things like this? This could be huge advancements into the future with different forms of communication and all different types of ways of accessibility to life. It can also cause a bunch of troubles such as brain hacking and people being able to intrude your thoughts because you don't have it set to private or something, you know, like all that kind of stuff I see probably happening in the future uh, before a lot of tests and studies get perfected. But it's interesting. His dogs, usually something in front of a dog would be way ahead of them. So I knew I had minutes to, to see what was in there. Mm -hmm. So I run up to this stop in a, to this tree in a full run, stop myself, and I'm trying to catch my breath. I'm panting, I'm panting, but I'm trying to be quiet, right? Because I didn't want to scare whatever's coming toward me. I could hear the dog coming. It wasn't far. It's probably 20 yards in the woods coming my direction. So the minute I hit that tree, I turned around to see if Junior was coming behind me, and Junior wasn't there. But what was there? Um, from me to you away, probably four foot, I could have leaned over and touched it with my hand. Good thing I didn't. Uh, somebody from NASA told me it would have killed you. It did. Could have. The energy from it. So um, there was a being standing there, just like Junior described, It was that he saw on the river. It was three, three and a half feet tall. It looked like a child. Um, not like a gray alien you would think about. People talk about it. It was a little glowing color of the moon, uh, soft glow, uh, three and a half foot 
four-year-old, looked like a four-year-old child. Head and face was a little different. Definitely weren't human. Eyes were glowing red. They looked mechanical. When you look at them, they look like the little markers on a transfer truck, the side markers. You see these little round lights along the side. They were about that side, inch and a half. It had this triangle on its chest glowing this thing was glowing but it had a dark section that won't glow it was in shape of a triangle and i knew i was in trouble the minute i saw it now it's all happened so quick i ran against that tree and i stopped myself and i looked back and i'm like oh my god what do i do so i got closer to the tree i didn't want to get closer that way to turn around so i back my back against the tree and i'm facing this thing and I said, I surrender. I, I mean you no harm. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not here to, I, I was just, I surrendered to it. I just knew I was dead. And I heard this voice say, you don't understand. We're not here to hurt you. We're here to help you. About that time, Rosie comes out of the woods. She's still coming. She's still tracking whatever it is. And it just vanished right in front of me, just disappeared. So I've recently been introduced by a couple of subscribers about this Chris Bledsoe. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but his name is Chris. And apparently like 16, 17 years ago, he had a really major story about him being abducted by aliens. The government got involved. He seems really genuine. I have some more of his videos in my saved folder. So we will be seeing more of him because he has some really interesting stories and it, they seem so genuine. And a lot of people are saying that he is the real deal as far as someone being truthful about being abducted by aliens and things like that. And all of his stories are just so like, they're like he's so calm and collective and he explains it so truthfully that it seems real. And I don't know if I can question it. I can't, I'm not going to call the guy a liar, but I'm not going to say that I necessarily believe it either because some of the things that he talks about is just like, wow. But they just seem extremely genuine. So I can't wait to go further down the rabbit hole with this individual and hear more of his stories. Hopefully you guys enjoy the stories as well. I don't know if I can I can't know it. You are like that. Get eso, get eso, get eso. I mean, looking at the video, I really didn't see anything until the very end as far as like a figure. I seen the light. The blue light was definitely noticeable. I don't know what that could have been really. That I don't know if that was just someone in the water, you know, scuba diving or whatever it could have been. I, I, I'm really, I don't have anything for this one. Let me know in the comments on what you guys think. Just keep watching up behind me on that ledge. Oh, sorry about that. He was, he was doing you. A... Oh, there he is. Okay, let's. <laughs> there. Ah, well, at least we've got a shot of of one. Hard to tell. Oh, okay. Right, that doesn't look good. There's another one up there. Um, right, that doesn't look friendly. That one's the male, so I thought that was the female burrow, so I don't know quite what he's doing there. Where has he gone? Behind those trees there. Oh, oh he's off. 
Let's just see if I can. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a hundred percent sure that these are fake. The very ending clip kind of sold it for me because the way he was running kind of looked a little animated. Other than that. Very well done if it's CGI, like a very good CGI edit. And it makes me wonder, is that older gentleman the one that's doing the editing of the CGI? Because if so, I would love to learn where he learned his editing tricks from because they're fantastic looking. Welcome to Global Nature News, your reliable source for the latest updates from the natural world. Tonight, we bring you news from Lake Samsara in the Karanji region. This is where the Homo piscis, the fish with human-like faces, was first discovered. Scientists have been conducting catch, tag, and release studies to better understand these unique creatures. And now there are whispers of another mysterious aquatic life form in the lake. While details are still emerging, we promise to keep reporting as we uncover more. These discoveries, however, have led to conflicts. Poachers and locals concerned about their livelihoods clash with scientists over the lake's resources. Tensions have escalated, resulting in civil unrest and property damage. In light of these events, it is crucial to emphasize the importance of conservation. The unique biodiversity of Lake Samsara must be protected. We all have a role to play in preserving these remarkable creatures and their delicate ecosystem. Stay tuned to Global Nature News as we continue to explore the mysteries of Lake Samsara and the conflicts surrounding it. We promise to bring you the truth no matter how complex the situation. Thank you for joining us. Remember to stay curious and informed. Good night. I mean, I know those are fake AI generated fish photos. And I did a video a couple of days ago. Why did I point behind me? Well, there's no video behind me. That was weird. But I did a video a couple of days ago with the fake AI fish in it and it's clear that those are AI generated. I just added this because I find it so fascinating on how real the images look and they're moving. AI is definitely getting good and it's gonna get very difficult very soon on telling on what's AI and not. That's the whole reason why I added this because even the individual that was speaking, the, the anchor man, he was AI generated. And I think that that was really well done. So leave a comment on what you guys think as far as the AI visual effects go on your thoughts on how, how they are going to improve in the future and how scary it's going to be because I think it's going to get like, it's going to get confusing really fast. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.